Ready when you are. Welcome everybody. We're welcome everybody for today's episode. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> welcome everybody to a very special episode. <laughs> It's funny when you get in front of the camera, it's a little bit different, right? All right. Welcome, everybody, to a very special episode of Whiskey Co. We are now today reviewing a uh, Maker's Mark BRT02. I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy the video, guys. You know the drill. Run that VT. All right, then, folks. So today we are joined by Whiskey Novice. Well, not kind of novice, kind of three or four or ten. Is that what you said earlier? I'd say three, yeah. So uh, just before we get into today's video, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider being or a subscriber because so far we've had such great support and we want extra people to join in on the community here. So we're joined by Shane today. He hasn't had a total, uh, uh, like a crazy experience when it comes to whiskey. So I want to delve in and, and try to sample the BRT Wood uh, Maker's Mark series with you today, Shane. I, from, from what I want to hear from you is what I want to hear is what's your whiskey experience been like to date? Because we've had someone else on the show and they talked a little bit about their own whiskey experience. And it's always good to hear from different people about kind of what they grow up maybe drinking or what they kind of saw, kind of what they're drinking now. No, I, quite, quite honestly, I, I really didn't grow up drinking whiskey. Um, right. We had whiskey, but it was your Jack Daniels, your your cheap stuff that you could buy. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, I probably in the past few years, I definitely got a little more comfortable with uh, drinking some more whiskeys that actually cost me a little bit more, maybe not just necessarily in the pocket, but um, and then with your help, of course, I've definitely learned a lot more. So what are you drinking right now? What, what is in your bar at home right now? Well, we're seeing a Buffalo Trace. I'm drinking a lot of that right now. Absolute staple. Recently. Yeah, and yeah. then I, have, I just bought a bottle of Angel's Envy, which I really love. Okay, so I um, think I might actually be, and I don't want to speak for you here, but I think that might be one of the first whiskeys that you ever have that's been finished in something different. It's pork barrels, right? Yeah, them. pork belly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have Tin Cup, and you have the... I have uh, Johnny Walker Black Label, oh, yeah. okay. and then... Um, some Willet? Some, and, uh, yes, yeah, I have Willet, yeah. The Willet Pot Still. Uh, have you had Makers before? I have had Makers before, oh, yeah. yes. Have you ever had any of the specialty series Makers? Nope. absolutely So not. this is going to be a completely brand new pour to you? Yes, I'm very oh, excited. So just to give you some sure. background information on the Makers Limited Editions. So generally they like to release, since 2019 they released one special edition. And in 2020 they released two. And then in 2021 they also released another two. And then in 2022 they released two. Okay, that might be a little bit confusing with all the twos. But I promise you, two every year apart from 2019. Definitely so, confusing. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. So this year they brought out the BRT01. One, but this, however, is the BRT02. So Shane hasn't watched the Maker's Mark Limited Edition series blind that we did. So he doesn't know how good this whiskey or bad this whiskey is. So what we'll do is we'll taste it and we'll just review it as normal. And, and for you, you know, you've never tried one of these limited edition makers, so it'll be interesting to see your thoughts on it. Yep. So I guess, as usual, what we like to do on the Whiskey Cove, as you might have seen, uh, you know, He's a long time subscriber. Please consider being one. So can it just look like how it looks in the glass here? Does it look thick? Does it look thin? Does it look like maple syrup? Does it look like, like soda? Like how, what does it look like to you in that glass? Does it coat the glass? Does it lace the glass? Because you said you're a beer drinker, right? Yes. So when you think of lacing in the glass, you think of like maybe like the foam sticking around the sides. Yeah. So do you see like any like the whiskey just like sticking on like the sides there? Does it look thick? What, what no, would you say it looks thick. like? I don't think it's thick. I think it's a thin. I do think it does look kind of like maple syrup, but it's definitely not thick. Definitely okay. not thick. So what color would you say it is? Putting you on the spot a little bit, huh? Eh? I'm gonna go ahead and say like brownish. Brownish. Light brownish. Is that the official color? Yes, brown, light, light brownish. Light brown. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, I, I like. What color do you think it looks I like? I think it kind of looks like a like a like a honey. Like you hold up, like I held up a, like a bowl of honey. Yeah, that would make more kinda sense. Like, like, I like an orange, like yeah. honey color, maybe yeah. like um, a copperish kind of copper hue to it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I think finally found out the color of the whiskey, right? I do think maybe it kind of has an originess to it, doesn't it? I think it definitely. I think it's uh, it, 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 it is light brown and it is orangey, so that's why I kind of settled on honey. If I'm completely honest, is the word whiskey also a color? It is now. So what color? I think it looks like it's. But I think whiskeys whiskey. come in generally different colors, right? I do think. I do think it's a very clear and okay. maybe maybe syrupy if syrupy. you're looking at color, but so not but not the, the viscosity thickness. of yes. it is yes. quite thick. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go in for a nose here. 
So okay. what I want you to think about is maybe some of the notes that you get just on the nose. Okay. So when we think of notes on the nose for whiskey, we may be thinking like, is it sweet tasting? Is it woody tasting? Is it dry? Is it spicy? So just kind of think about some of that stuff as your nose in the whiskey. Sure. Now, your whiskey. On oh, my whiskey, yeah. Okay. And you generally, you don't want to just stick your nose in. So what I like to do is kind of start like kind of just here and then slowly put your kind of nose in. You don't want to swirl it because we're not drinking wine. But I'm, swirling but I'm doing that to kind of coat the glass a little bit. Oh. Just so it gives off a little bit more of the flavor of profile. Yeah. yeah, who would have known, right? And then you just kind of bring it up to your nose a little bit and then you can bring kind of like the nose. And you want to keep your mouth open as well so it circumvents the air in your mouth. Obviously, not like you're trying to catch flies, but just gently. So, I, I'm picking up some very distinguished notes on this Maker's Mark, but what I want to hear before I put words in your mouth, Shane, is what you get from the nose. You kind of smell wood. Okay. A little bit of wood. Just like what type of wood? Like a weather-treated wood, some kind of dark wood. Okay. Yeah. You said weather-treated wood? What is that? Well, weather-treated as in like, we can build a fence with it outside. <laughs> Put some creosote on the old yeah. fence or something? Yeah. So like a, like a, like, like, like a fence that's just been coming out of storage and you're just putting it up? So well, like they, put oils, they put oils on okay. wood. So like a very like oily, yeah. viscous kind of nose yeah. in yeah. wood? Okay. So right. not just your straight dry wood. Sure, and I get that. I think they're definitely, this is, they call this the wood finishing series, I believe. Yeah, there you go, the wood finishing series. So a lot of the predominant notes you'll get are related to wood. Okay. So they all, like they said that for this one, they said that they use 10 virgin oak staves. So you're gonna get a lot of that wood characteristic from this. But on the nose for me, I'm definitely getting some of that like fresh cut, like sawdust, the wood that you'll get in there. Maybe a little bit of oiliness. I'm also getting like maybe like a chocolate and orange from it. I don't know if you're able to pick that up. And like a really nice like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this note, but like a barrel char note. So I guess you're only really familiar with a, a nose in note or a smell that you've experienced before. Yeah. So if you ever get a chance to like do a distillery tour or something and they're like toasting barrels, kind of just like try to stick your head in the barrel after they toasted it and kind of know some of those notes. And it's kind of like a really nice burnt caramel char note. And I think we get that from this here, Shane, okay? So sure. anything else you get from the nose there? Like, it's definitely not something dry. It's something that's a little thick, I would say, that it, it's not It's not something that you would uh, take it, burns down a little bit, but it's something that would could coat your mouth a little bit and sure. you could actually taste that pretty so well. So do you feel like you, this, this nose is more dry than sweet for you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, and, and that's completely fair. Like, you know, so nose in notes and tasting notes on whiskey is completely objective. So what we'll do now, we're gonna go in for a taste your shin. So, cheers. I think straight off the bat for me, I know that you said the nose is pretty dry for you, but personally for me, I think I'm getting maybe some sweetness on the palate there. And I'm also getting like, a, like an instant coffee flavor profile there. So are you familiar with like instant coffee? I guess that like, you can just like yeah. add water to and it's good to go. Yeah, and, and like, like I said, instantly I, I did say that it smelled very, not, well, not dry when I smelled okay, it, maybe, maybe and then when I when I drank it, I did I did actually get a different hint. I don't think it was coffee though. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but I would say, if I were to hang on, yeah, there's, there's a, definitely a lot going on there. That's for sure. But it's definitely a little bit of spicy note there as well. What, what you taste more in in your mouth as opposed to your throat and, and going down. Sure. I, I feel as if it, I wouldn't say instant coffee. Yeah. I, I would say something if you were going to go a coffee route, more that I would say that coffee would definitely not be an instant coffee. That would be a more like an actual beans and an that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a really great note and a popular note you can find in coffee. Uh, and I guess that's kind of, like it's all about opinions, right? And like, I can get him more of an instant coffee, you'll get him more of an espresso coffee. Maybe that more lens than maybe the bitterness that is in this whiskey as well. Mouthfeel wise, it does taste quite thick on the mouthfeel. Yep. And I think the proof kind of shines, so, you know, 54.7% alcohol. So the proof definitely does come through a little bit in there as well. And you talked a little bit there for a second about kind of like the heat going down. Yeah. 
So we're going into the realm of like the finish of the whiskey there. So what I like to do is I like to split the whiskey up into three different kind of subcategories in terms of like nose in notes, or actually let's say four, because I like to kind of see how it looks in the glass and appearance, the nose in notes, kind of how it tastes, and then the finish on the whiskey. So when we talk about like if it burns going down, I kind of like those after notes of how it sits in your mouth. That's kind of what we like to say is the finish. There. Okay. And sometimes the whiskey can change from the palate to the finish. So that's, I'm going to go in for another taste and I want you to talk maybe a little bit about how the finish has been for you there, if you're able to. Yep, great. While he's drinking, I'll go ahead and go in the finish. The finish for me actually, like, it doesn't sit right down at the bottom of my stomach. It, it just dissipates as it's going down. And I really like that about a whiskey. I think that if you have a whiskey that hits your your mouth, your throat, all the way down your stomach and just sits there, and I don't really like that. I think this kind of dissipates all the way through. It has the levels of, of, of going through your stomach and uh, not hitting there like it's a brick. Yeah, just staying there and burning. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that what they call that in the whiskey world is the Kentucky hug. Oh. Because most bourbon is from Kentucky. Okay. So it's kind of like you feel, I feel with this whiskey, you feel it in the throat a little bit, but it doesn't quite transcend kind of like the rest of the chest, yeah. right? I do get a bit of spice on, on the finish on the tongue. It's a little bit spicy. And when I say spicy, I mean like a, like a, like a, like a peppery kind of a chili spicy note. I don't mean chili taste. Yeah. I mean the spice that's associated with like. I would I would spice. actually agree with that. I would say that uh, it does have a little bit of a spice. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right. It's it's hard to distinguish distinguish the fact between like chili spice and just straight spice. Something yeah. that kind of just a little. Like Not a tang, like a like a, like a tang. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, um, and that's what it is. I think that, it, but it instantly goes away right away. And, sure. Mm -hmm. And I, but I also like that spice a little bit. Yeah, I really yeah. do. Definitely reminds yeah. you that you're drinking a whiskey, right? Yeah. 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 I think that's the most important mm -hmm. part. And also, when you're drinking bourbons and like American whiskeys, you're gonna get a lot of the spicier notes because a some a lot of whiskeys are like higher rye mash bill, which kind of lends to a, like a more spicier drink or more spicier whiskey. And also as well, it's finished in uh, new American oak barrels, which tend to make it a little bit more spicy Is that as, right? as well. Okay. Yeah, so when you when you drink like scotch, they generally use like uh, Oloroso sherry or like ex bourbon barrels. So it kind of like takes the spice on like a bit of a back, uh, like Where a back does that burner. spice come from though, if you're doing it in the barrel? It's just coming from like the oak, like the caramelization of the sweet notes. That adds to it. That, that adds, adds definitely. It. Oh. And, and like I said, the mash bill as well, if it's like a high rye mash bill, which generally means kind of like 15% rye. So when we talk about mash bill, for it to be legally called a bourbon, it needs to be 51% corn and above. However, this is actually a wheat whiskey, which means that it could be, st I, I don't quite know the mash bill is, and I probably should, but I think this is a 51% corn mash bill, but it also has like a heavy uh, amount of wheat in the mash bill as well. So sometimes people tend to lean towards maybe some like fresh cut grass notes yep. in a wheated whiskey. I'm not getting that on this. I'm getting more of like those toasted caramelized like um, like oaky uh, notes from this. And I think this is a really good whiskey. So I'm gonna ask you for two things at this point, Jim. Yes. So firstly, what we do, we do like value for money. Uh, we give a letter grade between A and F, F obviously being the worst and A being the best. So I'm going to tell you how much I paid for this bottle. I paid 60, like 64 dollars Okay. So for you in your own whiskey realm, if A is like fantastic value for money and again F is terrible value for money, where would you put that between A and F, A, B, C, D, E, F? I think you'd get a good solid B. Okay. Yeah. Why B? Well, the reason I think it's a B is because, like I said, the biggest thing for me when I'm drinking whiskey is I don't want something to go down my gullet and just sit there and burn. Yeah. I think this thing has a good note from the second it touches your tongue all the way down and it dissipates the the, the, the burn in, in itself. So with that, then you have the taste. I do think the taste alone itself is actually very good. If I could just do one more. Yeah, by all means, please do. That's what we're all about here on the whiskey club. And just kind of piggybacking off the back that I would probably also give it a B as well. I think that it has some really great like taste and, and nose in notes as well. And when I think about like value for money, I also like to think about like maybe like the branding of the bottle as well. Like this is Maker's Mark. It has like a cool like dipped wax note on there. It is like a limited release yep. as well. So like if you have some friends around and you pull out this bad boy and you're like, oh, you have to try this whiskey. Like that kind of just looks pretty yep. cool just yep. to sit in there. And like it ticks a lot of those boxes as well. <laughs> and um, 
like I said, you know, for $65, okay, that might sound expensive to some people out there if you're drinking Jack and Jim Beam, which costs like 20 bucks. Yep. But when you get into like the more expensive gym, uh, whiskeys out there, this is probably right in line and a little bit cheaper than probably what it should be. So that's why I'm gonna give it a B as well for this for value for money. So, Novus, Please. expert. Yeah. Agree. We both gave it the same Well, I wouldn't hair. say expert, but uh, you know, definitely someone who enjoys drinking whiskey, that's for sure, but a B. So the next question I'm gonna ask you is, uh, a score of 100. So why we do the 100 score, as opposed to like one through 10? I just think you can get a little bit more specific mm. when it comes to 100. So what I want you to think about is zero is just like this completely undrinkable whiskey that you just need to pour down the drain, and 100 being this like herald whiskey ball that you'll never be able to get well <clears throat> i think i'm fire you know i'd say i'd give it a about a high 70 i'd say like 78 79 oh, yeah. the reason i say that is because this is not a bottle that um i think needs to be necessarily chilled this oh, is yes. not a bottle that necessarily needs to be cool in any way you could drink this right off the shelf room temperature and, mm -hmm. and completely neat. And I think that uh, with the fact that it doesn't sit like a brick and it, do, it, do, it doesn't burn all the way down, it's just a very smooth whiskey that, you know what, they have should be proud of this one. And sure. um, I, I, I've had a lot of Maker's Mark, but um, this one actually is really good. Yeah, I think when you say, so when you say smooth, I wanna kind of expand upon that a little bit. Like you, when you say smooth, you mean like just easy to drink, very approachable, and I don't put words in your mouth. What do you mean by smooth? Well, I'll say, I'll say, I can, I can picture myself going home after work one day and just pouring a, a neat glass on of the this. porch. Yes, yeah. just porch. like swinging on the swinging on the chair, yeah. you know. And and I, I I would say it doesn't need to be cold. I, no, I mean, no, I get, it, I, it's something that's not hard. It's something yeah. that's not going to burn yourself all the way down to your souls, you know. Yeah. And and I I really I really really do appreciate. Yeah, I think it. this is a really approachable whiskey. I think it does a good balance between sweet and spicy. I think it has a really solid like wood backbone to it as well. I don't quite know the age on this ball, but it definitely feels like it's an older whiskey. When I say old, I mean like eight years plus. Yeah. Uh, and it does a good job, even if it's not. It does a good job at appearance. In that. And like I said, Brandon is on point, wax bottle, uh, cap as well, and everything. I'm probably going to give this an 84 out of 100. 84, all right. Yeah. Well, we're so kind not, of in the same no, no, Yeah, we're, we're definitely in the same ballpark. Of definitely that. a B, though. Yeah, no, value for money, definitely a B, <laughs> I think. Uh, I think what could this make it better to be an A? Uh, it's cheaper, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. you know, 50 bucks. I, I, I would say, yeah, that, right? you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. because I, when I think of value for money, I think for when it comes to like toasted or like double oak whiskeys, which is, this is what is definitely competing against. The Old Forest of 1910, which is kind of like a double oak toasted whiskey, falls right around the $50 mark, and I think that's like the benchmark of like an A whiskey when it comes to this type of whiskey. So we both agree on B on this, and we both have pretty high scores for it. Yep, so about all 79 all, to 85. So yeah. all in all, a definite buy. Agreed. Yeah, definitely Agreed. Buy. So yep. I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. We were joined by Shane, and, and I think he gave a really interesting take on some of the flavor profiles for our Maker's Mark finishing series here. Any final thoughts? Nope. All right, then let's get <laughs> out of here, guys. Uh, you know the drill. As we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers. <laughs>